reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all disciples seems a cause not for joy, but all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, and what is lame may not be dislocated but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter root spring up and cause trouble, through which many may become defiled. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. For He knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear Him, and His justice toward children's children among those who keep His covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear Him. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people, by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. My dear brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we, um, of course, this, this Gospel is a very, it's a very nice Gospel to, to reflect on with regard to our faith relationship with Christ, no? But let me just invite you first, uh, the first point that I'd like to invite you to reflect on is the context no, of, our, of our own personal reflections. No? And then the second point that I'll invite you to reflect on is that, you know, it's, it's very interesting that, that you know, despite the power of Christ and of God, our faith is needed in order for God's grace to take effect in us. No? And then the third point is very related to the second point, no, that what I've always mentioned, by quoting... Um, Quoting, um, I think Robert Johnson, no, uh, the Jungian spiritual uh, therapist and also spiritual writer, no, um, he said that grace is always available, but you must ask for it. So those three points to reflect on. So siguro tingnan natin, no, buhat sa pagninilay natin sa ebanghelyo ngayong araw. Tingnan natin yung mga ano sabi ng mga usung usung sabi ng mga bat, lalo mga bata. Tingnan natin yung mga ganap, no, dito sa ebanghelyo. Una sa lahat yung makikita natin yung ano yung 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 konteksto na 
kailangan ng ating malinaw na paniniwala sa Panginoon ano na hindi tayo na naiipit sa ating mga mga bias na tinatawag o mga sari, mga hakahaka natin ano kumisa nakakabulag sa atin uh, tapos yung pangalawang mahalaga rin tungkol sa pananampalataya ay uh, kailangan makita natin dito yung isang napakagandang ano masasabi natin biyaya at katangian ng ating Diyos na kailangan maniwala tayo sa kanya bago niya tayo matulungan ano o mabigyan ng biyaya hindi niya ipipilit sa atin tapos yung mga tatlong punto ay ay ano no sunod na sunod do sa pangalawang punto sabi nga ni Robert Johnson isang manunulat at isang Jungian uh, psychotherapist spiritual writer sabi niya ang biyaya ng Diyos ay laging nandiyan pero kailangan hingin natin para magkaroon ng epekto sa ating buhay siguro itong tatlong punto na ating pagninilayan So, first about our context. Ano? When you take a look at the gospel, you see here how the people in his hometown, his own neighbors, his own friends, were somehow blinded by their biases, by, by their preconceived notions. You know, he, they, they, were, they, they, they did not believe what Christ was performing ano? because they said, He's one of us. How can He do this? How can He say such such? And you know they recognized, no? They recognized that he was doing a, a terrific job, and yet their bias prevents them from accepting that, no? You know, one of the things that I realized when I was working with high school and grade school students, no? When in, when I was working with Ateneo in the grade school and high school, you realize that there are many conflicts between parents and their and their sons. It were all boys school, no? Uh, because somehow, no? Somehow, the parents somehow locked a 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old boy as an eight year old or as a seven year old. And you know, it's natural, no? I guess when they were six or seven no, and eight, um, very lovable and very sweet, no? And yet, when they go through the struggles of the teenage years, very often, not naman all the time, but, but in, in, very, in very difficult, I wouldn't say problematic, but in very difficult relationships with, between the parents and the, and the young man, it's always partly because the parents have somehow kept the, the young man as an eight-year-old or as a seven-year-old. And I think that is partly what the, the, the gospel is telling us today. No? Siguro mahalaga na makita natin, ano nga ba yung ating mga biases na ating mga pinaniniwalaan na kumisa nakukulong natin ng Diyos no sa sa ating sariling paniniwala. At sabi ko nga 'di ba yung yung yun yung isa man nakita ko nung principal ako at nung headmaster ako ng grade school at principal ng high school. Kadalasan yung ugnayan ng magulang at nung nung batang lalaki na merong problema ay kadalasan kasi yung mga magulang ay hindi nila pinalaki yung bata. 16, 17, 18 years old na ang tingin pa rin nila 7 years old yung bata. So nakakaroon ng konting problema doon. Ano? Eh, pareho yan sa Ebanghelyo ngayong araw. So siguro tingnan natin ano ba yung mga paniniwala natin, sarili natin gustong paniwalaan na kinukulong natin ng Diyos. And this brings us to the second point. No? Uh, when, we, when we sort of lock up or box in God within our own concepts that is not really faith no because faith is allowing freedom in the same way that god's that god gives us freedom and therefore if we if we put god in a box there is no faith there it is a convenient god no it is like a vendor machine god but faith is important faith for the grace of god to work in us is very much needed as as the gospel tells us that the lord could not perform His miracles there, except for a few healing healing moments, because they did not have the faith. No, and again, it's good to ask ourselves that. No, is it really the faith that we have in God, or the faith in the God that we want to to have as our own conscience? Remember what I said before, what what our novice master always told us: Do you seek the God of consolation, or do you seek consolation? Magkaibayon, no. Hinahanap mo lang ba yung, yung biyaya o grasya ng Diyos o ang Diyos ang hinahanap mo na siyang nagbibigay ng grasya? Kasi kadalasan kinakahon natin, na, kadalasan nakakahon natin ang Diyos dahil sa ating karanasan, dahil sa ating dinadaanan. No? Hindi yun pananampalataya. Yun ay isang 
paniniwala na ating gustong magamit no sa ating sariling convenience no parang vendo machine di ba kung anong gusto natin pipindutin lang natin hindi yun pa nan walang kalayaan yung ganung klasing relasyon siguro yung pangalawang punto na pagnilayan what is our faith in god and then the third and last point is very much related to the second point no? what what i think it's a very beautiful thing to remember what robert johnson said grace is always available but we must ask for it for it to have an effect in our lives and i think that is part of faith no part of faith as we see in many healing stories is that the people who sought the healing of christ ask for the healing grace not because christ wanted to feel important not because god uh, god wants us to always bow down before him No, because that is how much God respects our freedom. And that's how much He loves us. And that's how generous He is. Grace is always available. But we must ask for it. Because God gave us the freedom to say yes or no to Him. Napakaganda, di ba? Napakagandang masasabi natin. Ito ang katotohanan ng ating pananampalataya. Ganun ka respetado, ganun ka mahal tayo ng ating Diyos. Na binibigyan tayo ng kalayaan na umoo o humindi sa kanyang biyaya. Pero lagi yang nariyan. Dahil sa isang mapagbigay, isang bukas bukas palad, bukas puso na Diyos. Pero napaka lalim din ng kanyang pagpapahalaga sa ating kalayaan. Today let us no let us reflect on these things because this will make a big world of difference in how we are to live our lives in the day to day. To live our lives really no Allowing God to be God. Remember that first point to reflect on. To allow God to be God. And living our day-to-day lives, having faith no? that, that God is always with us. God accompanies us. And to allow, to allow our God to lead us. No? And the third and most important point for us to reflect on is to realize that our lives, everything, in our lives, everything is grace. But we must allow that grace to enter our lives in the day-to-day.